Welcome to another edition of a Beginner Breakdown. My name is uh, Mike Kummer, and today we have a special treat for you. We got a game, it's one of the best games of all time. And this game will go over what is a back row checkmate and what isn't a back row checkmate. And it's very, very exciting, okay? So a lot of games between uh, beginners, scholastic players, a lot of them, the majority of them, end in back row checkmate. So you really want to make sure to be safe with the back row checkmate. All right. So white starts out the game, e4. Black counters, c5. This is called the Sicilian defense. White kind of plays passively here and plays knight to c3. All right. It really doesn't attack the d4 square or doesn't really attack too much, so not recommended. A much better move is knight to f3. So black plays knight to c6. White gets out knight f3 now. And black plays e6. All right, letting his bishop go free here. White plays out bishop to c4. If you're playing black in this position, would you be afraid of this move? Not really, because the bishop isn't really eyeing f7. It's more like just biting at nails here, okay? Not really doing much. All right, so black just plays knight to f6. And white proceeds to castle. Black plays d5, attacks the bishop, and attacks the pawn. All right, so pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes back, and now this bishop is free to go. And white gets in a check here. Rook to e1, check. And black plays bishop to e7. All right, if you're playing white in this position, what move would you make? All right, let me ask you this question. Which piece of yours is under attack in this position? The bishop, very good. So, so let's not even make it more complicated than it needs to be, right? The bishop's under attack, let's move the bishop. Maybe pin the knight or something, okay? All right, but white makes a very dubious move in this position. He sees another check, <laughs> so he plays it, all right? So not very advisable. All right, you never want to trade a five-point piece for a three-point piece unless you're going to get some kind of big advantage. All right, so white just made a mistake, an, an unforced mistake uh, at that. All right, but that doesn't mean as black we need to make another mistake here. How should we capture back this rook? Yes, silent. By a knight. <laughs> yeah, excellent. The knight. The knight captures back, and guess what? Now we got another protector of this pawn. All right, unfortunately, he's like, oh, I just, it doesn't matter. I'll just take back with the queen. It does matter, because now the queen was doing something. It was protecting d5. And now there's only two, there's still two attackers of d5 and only one defender. So now we can, uh, we can take take him. So he takes back with the knight. Knight takes d5, fork, forking the queen and the knight. So let's just take it. Because as black now, we're ahead. We have a material advantage. So when we have a material advantage, we want to simplify, exchange, and then we'll just we'll win the game. So bishop takes d5. Okay. So now black castles. All right. He, He's going to let him uh, get the double pawns if need be because he's not afraid of exchanges in this position. So white plays out d3, letting his bishop uh, get in the game. So now black plays bishop to e6. So now if we're playing white and we want to trade, who would we trade? Would we trade? The bishop for the knight or the bishop for the bishop? Even though he probably doesn't want to trade in this position, maybe bishop back would be the best. But let's say he, he just has to trade. Who would we take here, the bishop or the knight? 
Yes. Knight? Yeah, take with the take the knight because look at what that just did to Black's pawn structure. He had a really nice pawn structure going here. One, two, three, three connected past pawns, three connected past pawns, two pawn islands. Now by taking, now he has three pawn islands. He's got an isolated pawn over here, a double isolated pawns, and then three connected. Okay, so so now his pawn structure is ruined. Okay. All right. So now White uh, gets out bishop to f4, and Black brings his rook over to d8. Rook a to d8. Okay. So now, when I play rook a to d8. What am I attacking through an x-ray? An x-ray is where a piece is seen through another piece to attack another piece or square. Just like an x-ray machine, seen through you to see inside, OK? So what is this rook on d8 now attacking through an x-ray? You can say. The queen, yes. Good, all right. So. So now you see how this pawn is in a pin on d3. So then we could go about trying to attack it, like pawn here, or even, even funny bishop here, OK? Even though that wouldn't be good, we could do it because the pawn can't take, or else, boom, it's gone, OK? So this pawn's in a pin. OK, so now the queen moves off of uh, the line to e2. So now what is the queen, well now what is the white queen attacking through an x-ray? The black queen, yes. Okay, so now everybody see how this bishop is now in a pin? All right, so now they do a little dance here and um, rook f to e8, okay? So now he protects the piece that was in the uh, the that was being pinned to by the bishop, OK? So now it's, it's free. It's fine for this bishop to move because uh, queen takes, then rook takes, OK? So this bishop really isn't in a pin anymore. All right. So now, after rook f to e8, white's rook goes to e1. So now he's protecting the queen. All right, so now black moves his queen out to d7. And so, so now white decides to be clever here. And it's like, I don't want this bishop to come down and take my pawn on a2 that's undefended, right? So I'll play the move b3. All right. So hopefully everybody can get this move at home and in the audience, OK? Because it's a really funny move. White just like played the move b3 and thought, all right, my position is solid, OK? But it's really not solid because if you look at everything on the e file, the e file is now the action file. That's where all the action is. Look at what's going on. We got a rook, a bishop, queen, and rook all in the same line. That's the, that's the action file for you. So what happens when this bishop moves? If this bishop would move anywhere. Yeah, the rook is attacking the queen, yeah. So it's a discovered attack, OK? So this is when we want to get the most bang for our buck. Because if this, once this bishop moves, white's going to have to move the queen, right? All right. So what move should black play in this position? Knowing that once the bishop moves, right? Oh, everybody can't wait. <laughs> well, let's go with silent first. What, what do you think? Bishop at 5. Okay. So bishop at 5. So it's like, wow. You know, the queen's attacked. But let's say say I move it. And now uh you know, we didn't really make them pay that uh for this discovery. Yes. G4. <laughs> well, <laughs> unfortunately, 
A bishop to g4? Is that what you mean? All right. All right, one more try. One more try. <laughs> it's black to move. Make them pay that the rook and the... Uh, and it might correspond to white's last move. All right. He's going for his second attempt. <laughs> well, that kind of just mocks, mocks the guy. Yeah, you can't take my bishop, buddy. <laughs> then he just plays that. And you see, it really didn't make him pay. It kind of humiliated him, but it really didn't make him pay that, uh, for this discovery. So we're, we're getting close, like really close to the answer. Anybody got any guesses? Steven? Bishop, Bishop captures b3. And now he's really feeling this. It's like, dang it. I just played b3 to stop you from getting that. But nope, I'm taking it anyway, OK? So now white has to move the queen out of the danger. So now, well, we could just calmly just retreat our bishop back with our pawn in our hand, or we could just trade, which we should, and then queen takes, and now, you know, we can, yeah, just get another uh, pawn here, okay? Makes sense? So when you have a discovery, you really want to make your opponent pay, okay? So you want to take material or try to get a checkmate, okay? We don't want to just play funny moves like bishop here, and then it's like true I mean, you can't take the bishop, but we don't really actually gain any material for that. Make sense? OK. But black actually plays the move you recommended, uh, bishop to g4, and now he's got a pin going. OK? So, so now you would think white would have to move the queen, right? <laughs> All right, but, but he decides to get very, very creative. So if you did not want to lose your queen, all right, but you didn't want to move your queen, what's the only move? Well, there's actually two moves you could play in this position, but he plays the funnier of the two. He plays bishop to e5, all right? So he, put, he voluntarily puts his bishop in a pin, and... Um, and he's, now he's in his, uh, the opponent's territory. So what move can black make? What are we supposed to do to pieces that are in pins? Attack them. Excellent, everybody. Excellent. Attack them. OK. So what's the easiest way to attack them? Yes? Um, pawn, F6. <laughs> pawn F6. Great. But if you were following my lectures, F6 is always the worst move on the board. However, I would probably play it in this position. But it's funny. If, if, if black ends up losing this, I bet you it's going to be because he played the move F6. Okay? Even though it's a good move, it really weakens his light squares, leaving him susceptible to checks. So he needed to keep that in mind. So when you play F6, you've got to be very, very careful. In, in this position, I would have played f6, by the way. Probably. All right. So white plays. He, he can't really play much. He plays queen to e3. All right. So now he gets out of this pin. And now, if you were really smart, how would you, what would you play in this position? Uh, yes. Pawn takes bishop. Yeah, how hard is it? All right, you just played pawn to attack the bishop, and then you took it, right? Yeah. All right, instead, he decides to be funny and take with the rook. All right. So, so he's like, yeah, I took with the rook, and I'm attacking your queen. But why is that not a good move? Horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, our horse can take the rook, right? Yeah. So now, because now, 
the knight is no longer in a pin because the queen's no longer on e2. So he went from doing great to, to not so hot anymore, okay? So now he takes back with the pawn, and uh, white goes ahead and takes. Queen takes e5. So now if you look at the material, we've had a little bit of a swing. Uh, white has two, two power pieces that add up to 14 points, and then he's got uh, seven pawns, so he's got 21 points. Black has two major pieces that add up to 14 points, plus the uh, bishop for 17, and now he's got one, two, three, four, five pawns for 22. But these pawns aren't very good, all right? So, so we'll see what we can do here. So black's only up by a, a technically a point right now, even though he's got a major piece. All right. So now black plays uh, the move queen to d4. So black is up material. So he wants to trade material. And plus, this would be very, very nice of white if he took, and then he could strain up all his pawns. And, and now it goes from a tough victory for black being up that slim point, even though he's up just a point still, see how, see how much easier it's going to be to win this end game than, uh, well, than this one, OK? So white doesn't want to do black any favors, OK? So he doesn't. He plays uh, queen to e7. He gets right up there and attacks the rook here. OK, so now black plays rook to f8. And he probably slammed it, OK? All right, so he's threatening. What is he threatening now? Checkmate. checkmate. So a guy already sees how it's, you know, he's threatening checkmate. Does he really see how he's threatening checkmate? Now, that's the question. OK, so if I play a4, let's just say I pass, OK, a4. Can you show me the checkmate here? Yeah, good. All right, go ahead, go ahead. You got the floor. Queen, uh, you mean ca capture the pawn? Capture the pawn. All right, queen takes f2 check. I only, white only has one legal move in this position. It's to go hide in the corner. All right. So now, can black checkmate white? Notice, this is how a back row checkmate occurs. White is surrounded by his own forces. So, so black has checkmate. Uh, all right, well, you got the floor still. So then if he takes, takes rook, uh, that would be... Like yeah, unfortunately, queen takes rook isn't going to do the trick because queen comes down and takes. But he still might have checkmate. Are you looking at me or the board? Uh, queen goes down. Queen goes down. <laughs> all right. Goes to the bottom. He takes. <laughs> yeah, queen to the bottom. Boom. Check, and then... White only has one legal move to take, and then take and checkmate. OK, so a queen sacrifice to end the game. Everybody see that? How he is actually threatening a checkmate in this position? So you always got to be aware of these uh, back row checkmates, because they can hit you at any time if you're not careful. But luckily, White saw it. He's like, hey, yep, no problem, no problem. <laughs> so he plays rook to e3. A very weird way to stop a back row checkmate by leaving, uh, by leaving the back row. Okay, Usually you want more forces heading toward the back row to stop a back row checkmate. You don't want to be fleeing the back row to stop a back row checkmate. So now black gets all excited. He's like, oh, you just left the back row. I got checkmate. So, so what do you think black pounded on the, on the to, to say, all right, it's always over, checkmate. But it's not checkmate. Yes, Steven sees a queen to a1 check. But it's just check. And all right, yep, we'll just go back. So we could do this all day if we wanted. And uh, draw, OK? But obviously, black, even though he's kind of mad that uh, this, this didn't end in checkmate, so now he's mad. So when you're mad, what do you think you're going to do? 
Yeah, just just take anything. Just whatever I can take, I'm taking now. I'm I'm so mad. All right, so I'll show you. And so White's like, well, you just took some of mine. I'm gonna take something of yours. Okay, so it's all good. All right. So now, Black just he doesn't even know what to do anymore. So he just goes Queen to B2. Okay. I guess he probably tried to take the pawn, but saw hey, you know, it's protected. So I just stop at B2. All right. So, so now he left the door open. And now, did I tell you how bad that move f6 is? All right, trust me. This is why I say it's bad. Because y leaves you susceptible to checks along this, uh, this very important diagonal, OK? So what should y do to take the lead in this game? It all stems from that careless F6 move. All right, it's white to move. <laughs> I think St is Steven already playing on the board. Oh, he hasn't? Or has he? It sure looks like he did. Yeah, all right. Anybody else have any guesses? White, I mean, this is the winning move. You play this, this move, and you're going to probably win the game here. All right, silent. White, queen d5. <laughs> no, you don't want to. Queen d5, oh, not the best. Uh, not the best. <laughs> but, but you're on, see, but what did queen to d5 have? It said check. All right. But you want to make the most out of your checks. One, you don't want to put play checks where obviously uh, your piece is going to get taken. But you want to be doing forks. Forks basically double attack. So you want to be attacking the king and other pieces. So, so look at this bishop. He is an undefended piece in your territory, right? Right? So is there any way? that one of our pieces could attack the king and this bishop simultaneously. Queen to c4, check. OK, good. Much better than queen to d5, check. All right, so now, so now let's say he played, uh, yeah, he could move his bishop to block, and then we could just take with check. But he decides to play rook to f7. Um, use your rook to the back row? Or, yeah. you, want, or you don't want to take his bishop? I guess. Well, what do you think? What do you think? So, so I, I kind of say, hey, just take the bishop. Mm -hmm. My, Michael's saying. So it, it's over, right? Good. Very good, Michael. He found the checkmate. Yeah, you don't want to take a three-point piece when you can checkmate the billion-dollar piece, OK? And yeah, game's over, all right? So that was very exciting. Now you know what a back row checkmate is and uh, how to try to avoid them. But you really, you really don't want to do what he did, where he actually leaves the back row to stop the, the back row checkmate. Um, although it worked, I'll give it that. I can forget him that it, it did work, but uh, it's very, very risky. Okay, so we have another game. This is, oh no, oh no. All right, I found it. All right, all right. Here's the game. This is a game between uh, Justin Hall and our Scholastica coordinator, Matt Barrett. This is another uh, great one, all right? So, so white starts out e4, and black plays e5. White plays knight f3, black plays knight to c6. All right, now, now Justin goes ahead and puts his bishop on b5. This is called the Roy Lopez, okay? 
So black plays a6. Now, if I was playing the Roy Lopez as white, I would take this and give my opponent double pawns, double pawns, all right? The whole point of this is, uh, well, he's got double pawns, obviously. And then eventually we'll get into an end game where I have these four pawns to his three, and I can create a, a pass pawn. And then he's got these four pawns to my three, and he can't create a pass pawn because these double and weak, OK? But instead, Justin plays another variation of the Roy Lopez not recommended, bishop to a4. So he's, he's just saying, black, you can play b5 for free. I'll go here. And then, um, you know, he could play knight to a5 and, and get the bishop too already. Or he could just uh, calmly develop too, however he wants to do it. All right. So, so after bishop to a4, black decides not to get into this b5. He just decides, I'm just going to develop normal, knight f6. All right, white gets castled. And so now black wants to get castled. He decides to just play uh, bishop to e7 instead of going to c5. Rook to e1 protects the pawn. And now black decides, OK, I'll, I'll play b5. Why not? And now the bishop goes to b3. So now black plays d6. See, black should have really played his bishop to c5 instead of the e7, right? Because now this bishop is trapped. Not very good. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. All right. So he kind of boxed himself in there. But now white decides to play d4. So black doesn't want to take here because he's hoping that after he makes a move, like castle, obviously, um, that he'll help him out. He'll do him a favor. But as I said before, you know, now his bishop can go free. You don't want to be doing your opponents any favors in the game of chess, OK? All right, so, so you see how taking, even though it's pawn for pawn, it would be a weak move, because it would be allowing his piece to be, get mobile. All right, so you want to make sure when you're doing exchanges that you're getting some kind of advantage out of them and not helping out your opponent. All right, so, so white plays c3. All right, he's like, oh, wait, you take, and then you make my pawns good, OK? But black sees that, and he's like, I'm going to have no part of that either. What do you think black plays in this position, if you had to guess? Anybody have any guesses? So we obviously see we don't want to do any pawn trades. We probably want to get one of our uh, pieces off the back row, right? So maybe a uh, bishop to g4, a pin, OK? So now white decides, all right, enough with the, the exchanges. You don't want them, fine, d5, I'm attacking you. All right, so now this is a very interesting position here. This is not one you see too often. All right, so d5, I just attacked the knight, right? So who do you think we should move as black? The knight. The knight, right, OK. Good, we should move the knight. Knight to a5 attacks the bishop. What do you think he would do? He would play bishop to c2. All right, and if we ever try to get our knight down here, he'll play b3, and our knight will just have to retreat. All right. So we want to think ahead. We don't want to be like, oh, well, I'll attack his, his bishop. Well, just think for a second. Don't play hope chess. Be like, hey, he's not going to really let me just take knight takes bishop. He's going to retreat it, OK? Knight to a7, pretty bad. We actually want to just go all the way back to b8. And now we don't want to just put our knight back on b8 and say, well, he's just back home. Oh, well, nothing I can do. 
we want to be having plans, OK? So then we can play our knight here, and then the c5, and then he's attacking the bishop and the pawn, OK? So that would be a decent plan for black. And so he sees it, because at th this time he was almost a chess expert. He is now. So he sees, hey, I'll put my knight on b8, and then I'll get a plan going, OK? So Justin's just putting his pieces out the back row, and he's got really no idea why. OK, knight b to d2, knight b to d7. He's like, I'll go to f1, knight f1. But he's got a plan with it. I mean, it's a simple plan, and it's a plan that really shouldn't work. But he basically wants to put his knight. So knight to c5 attacks the bishop, bishop back to c2. And now black decides he doesn't want to get back row checkmated here. All right, but let's just say a black passes, OK? All right, let's just pretend, OK? Plays work to a7. What do you think white's moves, or white move is going to be? And he's kind of orchestrated out what he's going. I mean, if you look at. If you look at his last two moves, it's been knight b to d2, knight to f1. Where do you think this knight's going? e3 to attack the bishop. And then we can just play bishop here, right? Sound good? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, one, one player doesn't like it at all. <laughs> well, we legally could play bishop to h5. But, but by playing the move g6 here to stop the back row checkmate, it's kind of weird. Because now, if we play knight to e3 and we put our bishop back there, it's kind of scary. Because he can try h3 and then g4. OK? So kind of weird move g6. All right. And now, let's just say we don't play knight to e3 here. What do you think is kind of a natural move when somebody plays g6 in this position, forget the uh, knight idea right now. What do you think we should play here? Bishop yeah, bishop to h6. Looks very good. OK. And now our bishop is attacking the rook. And he has to play rook to e8. OK. And now we can go ahead and play knight to e3. OK. All right. But, but instead, he plays, um, he, I think he just goes ahead with his idea of knight to e3. And it blocks in his bishop. That's another reason that bishop move was necessary. Bishop to h6. So knight to e3, and black decides to play a5 here. All right, so. So obviously, he's going to take here, and knight takes. So the reason why he exchanged there is now he doesn't have to worry about the pin anymore. All right. So white doesn't want to hit. So, so you see, now if this knight moves anywhere, the knight is under attack here. Queen takes g4, OK? But. There's no really good place for him to go. He can't play knight takes knight because this knight could then come down and take him back. So he's got this x-ray going, but he decides to play h3 here. So obviously when he plays h3, he's going to have to move the knight right back to f6. So he's like, well, I played h3, you know, go away. But it's also taking away any kind of uh, cool move he wanted to do. Like he might have been, may may have wanted to play knight to d4 at some time. I know, obviously, it takes here, but you take back, and now you're attacking two knights. Okay, so you eliminate all kind of tricks you can do. Okay, but hey, he wanted he wanted that knight out of there, so h3. So now he's like, well, I'm not going to get back row checkmated either. All right, look at me, OK? So that's great. OK. So knight f6. 
So once again, he could do the move uh, Peter recommended, bishop h6, right? Rook to e8, OK? Because that's uh, the only place black can go to, rook to e8, right? All right. But instead, he holds it off and plays b4, OK? Attacks the knight. So he takes, he takes back, and now he swings his knight to a4. So he's threatening knight to c3 and uh, all kinds of good things, OK? So white decides to play queen to d3 in this position. So you have to ask yourself, why did he play queen to d3? To attack the pawn. So, so that's what you need. So let's just protect it. Okay, can't be any easier than that. Queen to d7. And now White finally decides, oh, I'm going to attack this now. But because he waited so long, now does this rook have to go to e8? No, right? He can go wherever he wants. And uh, so he he missed a free move basically. All right. So. So now rook f goes to the c file instead of being stuck on e8. Like if he wanted, if he would have played this about five moves earlier, see the position would be like this, and it would be white to move here, and he could do anything he wants. Or I don't know what he, what he would want to do, maybe a3 or something. And then he would have to play here, and then it would be white's move. All right. But see in this position when he plays bishop h6 now, Rook here, and now it's uh, white to move. Instead of getting two moves, we'll get only one. Okay, so you really want to take advantage. Uh, you know, when you see a good move, just play it and uh, and don't wait because it could be too late. Now it's not even that great of a move. All right. So now Rook F to C8. He decides I'm going to take the guy. How should black take back? Should he take back with the rook or with the pawn? The rook, the rook right. This is the, we have an open file on the A file. We don't want to give that up for nothing, OK? And now we can start piling up on this, uh, on this A file and piling up on there. Very good, OK? So don't clog up your files, OK? So now he plays his rook over to c, to c1, and that's a big oversight. Okay, so just because, so now what should black play? Obviously, black didn't see it, or white didn't see this move in the game. What move do we have? Uh, Steven sees it, it looks like. Adjourn, do you see it? Yeah, Rook takes b4. OK, so this is what Justin failed to see in the game. All right, look. So bishop takes, knight, rook takes, OK? So he just thought, wow, he's just taking my piece back, big deal, OK? So, so just because he was taking something didn't mean he didn't want to be on that square for other reasons besides just capturing. So, so it's an oversight you see a lot where, OK, he just took back. you got to see when they capture you back to see, wow, what is, what is that piece doing you know, so good on that square that he just took back? So he has other reasons besides just taking back to wanting to be on a4, and it's to attack the pawn. So then, boom, he just lost the pawn, OK? But it's OK, he's just down a pawn. He can, uh, he can try to recover here. So he brings his knight back to d2. Black plays c6. Attacks the pawn here. All right, white decides attack the rook, a3, rook to a4. Now he's like, I'm going to take rook takes c6. And now Justin thinks he sees a tactic here. He calculates this all the way out and thinks, I'm going to have back row checkmate at the end of it. Because he sees 
this bishop controlling g7 and f8. Okay, so he thinks, see, in this, well, he thinks he's got checkmate, okay, because the, the king can't, can't flee, okay? So, so he decides to take, queen takes b5. <laughs> okay, all right, so, so look at what the queen's in the same line is. The rook, the queen, the rook, the queen. So if this rook moves, right, the queens are lined up, right? The queens are lined up against each other. So what would you want to say is black when you move the rook? So then you check, right? good, all right? You want to say check, okay? So there's only one check you can do with the rook. And Justin just smiling, he's like, yeah. Uh, you're falling right into my plan. You're falling right into my plan. And so when Matt comes up and takes, oh, he's just smiling so, so big. He's like, I can't believe he fell for it. So he's like, check. <laughs> All right. So, so why did Justin go from smiling ear to ear to, to be like, oh, my God, I just lost the game. Right, he was thinking he's just going to play his queen back and then he's going to take and the game's over, checkmate. But he failed to realize at the check, Justin's got this neat little move, knight to e8. And now he's done a lot of material. And, uh, and uh, he, just, he just gets up and he's like, oh, it's over now. Game over, okay? So, so when you do checkmates, back row checkmates, you got to make sure that they really are back row checkmates because you think you see something like, okay, that's definitely a mate, but you got to be really, really uh, precise about it and don't let uh, them block the checkmates. A great book that's very recommended that we actually sell at the club is uh, Bobby Fisher Teaches Chess. It's a great book. It's a quick read. Uh, there's no notation on it. It's just simple yes or no questions. Like, is this a checkmate? Is this not a checkmate? They go through a lot of uh, back row checkmates and other cool checkmates. Very recommended for you to uh, purchase. Mm -hmm.